classic miracle story today. You may have noticed that we skipped from the Gospel of Mark to the Gospel of John. Last week, we heard the Gospel of Mark right up until the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, and now we shifted to the Gospel of John because his account is longer and it includes more detail. Now, I have chosen to not speak of the actuality of this miracle for today, you know, the, the superabundance of God, partly because I've already said that in a previous homily, but also because at this point, you all know my policy on miracles. I'm a fan. I feel, <laughs> I feel like anything I say would be redundant. So instead, I want to talk about what's also going on in this reading on a more natural and simple level, the divine act of sharing, and the amazing results that come from sharing and generous, a generous attitude of giving. And I'm going to talk about this to make one solid point. Here's the point. There are people out there who complain about miracles, that they're too ridiculous and outlandish for us to believe. And to that I say, nay. I can't resist doing that, I'm sorry. God's not the problem. God's ways aren't the problem. We're the problem. Sometimes we get so short-sighted in life that we lack the ability to believe in one another and ourselves. And if we don't have enough confidence to believe in each other, it is axiologically valid to state that we don't even have enough trust in God's presence in our lives. And by the way, when I say axiological, that is something that is always true, that you don't need to, you don't need to argue about it. A triangle has three sides. That is an axiological statement. It is always true. So I'm saying that if we can't even muster up enough trust in one another, then the problem has nothing to do with God. The problem is way closer to home, way more simple and way more personal than we give it credit for. So, what does that look like? Not having, not believing in people right in front of you. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about those moments in life where you're afraid that everyone involved is going to do their best, but it still won't be enough. For instance, simple example, have any of you ever gone to a potluck afraid that there wouldn't be enough food? That is a very common fear. That is almost never true. I have never been to a potluck where they ran out of food. Everyone I've ever been to, everyone brought a reasonable amount of food, and then everyone ate like a king all night long, and then there were still oodles of leftovers for the host after the guests have gone. I cannot think of an exception to that. Even, even locally, when my family comes in for celebrating something here in Cedarburg, like uh, they were here for Father's Day. Every time, it's, it's amazing, my family comes, reasonable amount of food, we munch, we have fun, my family goes home, I open my refrigerator, and I have like two weeks of party food that I have to whittle down every single time. And every time around the two week mark when I'm getting really sick of seven layers, you know, uh, taco salad or, or whatever else my family brought, I ask myself the same question. Where did all this food come from? It's five times as much as I bought at the store and I was hosting. I ask that question every time. My answer is always the same, and it's perfectly simple. It's just the power of sharing. Somehow, when we give out of the goodness of our hearts, we tend to end up with more than what we sacrificed in the first place. It's, an, it's a strange phenomenon. It never ceases to amaze me. And by the way, I have people in my life who in no way believe in the power of sharing. They think sharing is for chumps and suckers and the gullible. You will not envy them if you see how they live. 
These are people that think that if they don't share, they will have more. Every single one of them is incredibly mistaken, and it would not take you long to discover that. So getting back to my original point, being afraid that the good of people is not enough. I've got one more example I'd love to share. A few months ago or so, a friend of mine from college posted a link on Facebook. Uh, it was a fundraising page for himself. Uh, what happened was, this is a guy that has had a lot of trouble getting a decent job. He's just had a string of bad luck. Um, he got, he was almost there in getting a, he was going to have a job that he wanted. It was a job that would pay fairly well. But the problem was, it was a government job, and they required a training weekend that you had to pay out of pocket. Okay, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't comp you and then take it out of your paycheck later on. You had to pay up front. This guy just didn't have the money, so he started this little page and asked his friends to help. He had to raise several hundred dollars, and he could only do it in four days. He needed the money in four days. He raised the money he needed in less than a day, which was heartwarming. I was very gr grateful to see that. Now, I know this isn't the best example, because we're talking about raising less than $1,000. I realize that's a pittance for a lot of people here. Try to understand that he was asking this from his friends. He was asking for money from waitresses, literal starving artists, and priests. <laughs> people not known for their deep pockets. But what was happening is every half hour or so, someone new would chip in 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Every time I went online, the number increased. And like I said, he raised the money he needed, you know, just no time, no time at all. It's moments like that that can really restore my faith in humanity a few points at a time. But I want you to imagine something with me. I want you to imagine what must have been going on in his head at the very beginning, as soon as he put that site up. I truly believe that what he was thinking was something similar to this. What if I don't get the money? What if I run out of time? Maybe my friends don't care about me all that much. Will I have to turn down yet another job? Do I have to start over from scratch again? I truly believe that every single one of us would think that for a little bit of time if we were in the position he was in. Because the fact is, as human beings, when life gives us that sort of situation, we experience fear and anxiety. Is this gonna work out? And the problem is, fear disrupts faith. With enough fear over a long enough period of time, it will it will interfere with our ability to believe in miracles. With enough fear, we will lose our ability to believe in each other. So I want you to hold your head high whenever you take away someone else's fear. Because if you succeed at taking fear away from someone's life, you will somehow be restoring an element of trust in their life. And who knows how long that trust has been missing before you showed up. Sharing is Christ-like. And sharing is a vanquisher of fear and despair. I trust that I've made my point clear. Sharing and generous giving are powerful acts in this life, and the results very often surprise us. I don't know the next time God is going to surprise us in this life, either be it a miracle, a vision, a sign, whatever. None of us have control over that. But whether we're waiting for a miracle or moving on with our lives, we can nevertheless be tiny miracles to each other. So be generous to one another. Combat fear whenever you see it. And have a little bit of faith in God and in yourselves. <laughs>